What's up YouTube, Brian here back again with another rod review and today we are looking at this guy and the name of this rod is a mouthful. Uh, sit down for this. It is the Mega Bass Destroyer Evolution Super Diablo Type L. Yes, all of that is on the blank here, so that is the official name. Um, first off, my name is Brian and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do a lot of high-end and, well, I kind of review a lot of rods, but they tend to skew high-end, but um, I like to do deep dives on rods that most people might not be able to get their hands on or actually get out and fish and try. So when you're out looking and shopping for these kinds of rods, hopefully my channel can become a little bit of a resource. I'm not an expert. I don't work in the fishing industry. I work in technology. Uh, I'm just a fanboy. I just do things out of my basement just to kill some time, have some fun, and talk to you guys. So that being said, let's look at this rod today. It is the Mega Bass Evolution. Now there's very, very little reviews or kind of like looking at these rods or talking about these rods that isn't being done by someone trying to sell you one of these rods and it isn't being done by Mega Bass themselves. So what's cool is Mega Bass Japan dropped a video and I'm going to leave the link up in the corner um, where Yuki Ito, the man behind Mega Bass, he actually des describes in very detail about the design and the construction of these rods. So the Mega Bass Evolution, if you're not aware, is a Japanese market rod uh, I don't think there's very many places you can pick these up in the United States. There's a few shops that do sell them. It is a $650 MSRP price point Mega Bass rod. So it's really at the top end of their scale. This thing is more expensive than the P5s, more expensive than like the Tomahawks, more expensive than the Valkyries. I think these are, yeah, these are definitely more expensive than the Valkyries. So it's kind of up there at the top of the mountain for Mega Bass uh, rods. Now what sets this rod apart from the other lot rods in the line is these rods have strands of titanium. So there's actually metal that go up the blank. Now how far up the blank they go, I'm not totally sure. If you kind of look at this blank up really, really close, I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom in on that, but um, you can almost see the, maybe you can see the titanium running through the blank because there is these really defined horizontal lines that go up on this. So when you look at it in the light, you can maybe see the titanium. I don't know if that's the titanium or if that's the, the carbon. I'm not totally sure. But the idea is Mega Bass are very firm on their belief that metal is the best way to conduct transmit sensitivity information or information that's going on down at the end of your cast to your hand. So Mega Bass loves putting metal on their rods. They love finding places to insert some metal here and there, whether it's like the lock nut or in this particular rod's case, the entire blank. Um, so you're paying a lot for the titanium uh, strands that are going through this rod. It's supposed to increase sensitivity. It's supposed to increase uh, rigidity, all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about the rod itself. So this is a Super Diablo Type L. There's a small handful of rods in this line. Um, I don't know the names of all of them because uh, this is the only one I've ever owned or touched. Um, but there's like five or six rods in the Evolution line. Maybe more. I'm not totally sure. So a couple things about this rod. Number one, it has Torzite guides according to the Japanese Mega Bass website. Now, I think these are Torzite. I can't completely tell. But according to their website, it is Torzite Guide. So you're getting the high-end Fuji guide train on these rods. So it's part of your $650. Number two, the styling on this rod is gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful fishing rods I've ever owned in my life. You got this really amazing gold accent. Then you got all of these color flourishes with lots of different colors of um, strand around the guides. Um, the fit and finish is impeccable as always with Mega Bass. So I'm going to give you a like a quick, I'm going to try and get you an up close look at some of the guide wrapping on this stuff. I mean, it is, it is a beautiful rod. The lock nut has this really cool kind of like eagle talon kind of claw that goes down around the blank. Um, you got this really, really shiny, uh, f glossy finish around the reel handle. And then you got some red metal accents here. Then you got a pretty good cork. So for $650, this cork does have some filler. Mega Bass's cork has never been super high end, even on their $650 rods. Um, then you get the Edo Engineering hit right here. And then you got EVA and cork on the butt for no apparent reason, just to look cool. And then, you know, you got your metal uh, Edo Engineering um, hit on the bottom. I mean, top to bottom, this rod is gorgeous. So the gold part only goes up to the second guide, and then the rest of the blank is that kind of unfinished, um, but sanded, like it's very smooth blank. So 
On a scale of one to 10 in the looks department, this rod is like a straight 10. This is one of the most beautiful fishing rods I've ever owned in my life. I've used this rod for two years now. I picked this rod up used, so I'm on my full second season with this rod. And uh, so now that we got the looks out of the way, the exorbitant price point out of the way, what the what is in this blank that makes it kind of unique out of the way, let's talk about this rod itself. The Super Diablo Type L, this is one half power heavier than the regular Diablo Type R. So you can get the Diablo Type R in the Levante and the per and, and the Orochi Double X series. So you've had a rod, everybody can go get one. They're very easily obtainable, but that is a F5. So it's kind of like a regular medium heavy. This is an F5.5. So it's a slightly higher power. This thing is rated up to one ounce. Now, if you're gonna throw one ounce on this thing, good luck. I don't think this rod is really capable of that. Um, it's a pretty squishy rod. So I think one of the downfalls with this rod to me, and the reason I haven't done a review on this rod since I've owned it, is I really, really have a hard time finding things I like throwing on this rod. So if I were to judge this rod just based on looks alone, I love it, but actually using it out on the water, I really don't like this rod. Um, there's a couple reasons. Number one, whoop, I'm gonna hit the ceiling. Number one, the tip on this thing is extremely soft. If you notice, the um, the be the bend goes way past the front and it kind of continues right through the middle. So you got this whole big, soft, squishy tip. Now, they tout this rod and the Diablo Spec R in general as great moving bait rods. They're supposed to be used for shallow running crankbaits, spinner baits, chatter baits, top water, um, buzz baits. In all those applications, this rod is very capable of. This is a, you can totally throw spinner baits on this. You can totally throw chatter baits on this. I throw a lot of spinner baits and chatter baits on this rod. There's one fatal flaw. This rod, because it's so sensitive, because you have that titanium going up through the, bl the, the blank, when you're throwing a jackhammer on this thing or a spinner bait with some decent sized bl um, blades, this thing is so freaking annoying to use. I'm not kidding. Like it, you can feel every single twitch of the blade in your hand, and it's like do 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 do. It's like having um, I don't know how to describe this. It's like if you're driving a car where you're hitting the little speed bumps on the side of the. You know when you're on the. This is the this is the analogy I'm gonna use. If you're driving a car and you veer over into the the little um, caution strips, and your start your car starts going. Do, 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 you know what I mean? That's what it feels like fishing this rod. It's so sensitive and there's so much information and so much vibration being felt through your hand. When you're dragging a chatterbait, like a jackhammer or a spinnerbait along, this thing is like thumping all day long. And it actually is really annoying. I found that I didn't like having that like vibrating feeling all day long. So if you're chucking a chatterbait around with this, you're feeling every little, it's like a little machine gun just all day long on your hand. I don't like that. Um, I find that my, my medium heavy, glass x bride or my javelin um or there's other rods i have that i love throwing a chatterbait way more than this thing so yes this can do moving blade based baits but i personally found it really annoying i didn't like i, I would throw it for maybe 20 30 minutes and i'm like okay i'm done i can't handle this anymore now because of the taper on this rod it's not a great bottom contact rod. I know this rod is being touted by people as like a good junk fishing rod where you can use it for all sorts of stuff. You can throw a 3 8 jig on it. You can throw a light Texas rig. Um, you can throw a shaky head on this thing. You can throw a, a lip list. You can throw a spinner rig. Yes, you can do all that stuff. But if you hook into a fish around docks or grass or any kind of heavy cover with like a jig on this thing, you're going to need to break this rod or you're going to have a fun time getting them out of any cover. I mean, it does not have that much of a backbone. The... Um, this, although this, I was comparing this rod to a few other rods, the, the bend on this rod is softer than like the 7.2 medium heavy x Pride, but, but a little stiffer than the Mega Bass Deimos. So if you use the Deimos, the Deimos is an F5, so it's a little, it's a power lighter than this and, and a little lighter in the rating. That is a way better moving bait rod than I think than this rod is. And it's a lot cheaper, but Anyway, it's discontinued, you can't find it anymore anyways. But anyway, my point is, if you're gonna get a rod that you're gonna wanna throw buzz baits, spinner baits, that kind of stuff with, I probably would go with the regular um, Diablo Spec R and save yourself a ton of money, then step up to the Super Diablo Type L because this thing is just too sensitive, too expensive. Um, I just didn't, I don't like it. I mean, I, I know people like throwing traps on this rod and like lipless, 
I'm not a big lipless guy. I did throw it on this thing and it felt fine. You could feel the lipless coming through. You could feel all the vibrations, but I just, if this rod was like a little stiffer and was great for bottom contact, cool. If this rod was a little softer and maybe dulled a little bit of the information coming through your hand for um, bladed bait, I would like it. But I just, I get, I get very confused in this rod. Um, I just don't know what its strong suit is. I don't know what its pocket is. And for $650 MSRP, uh, you shouldn't be that confused. Like you should know exactly what you want to do with this rod for that kind of price point. Um, I think it's like not, I wouldn't even call this thing a jack of all trades. I just think it's a jack of no trades to no, remember, this is just my personal opinion using this rod. I know there's people out there that love this rod. I, I've seen people call it a tune fork. Um, I'm sure this rod has a big fan base of people who love it. I'm just not one of them. I think that when people talk about this rod, they probably are a little into the kind of like the hype about it, the $650 titanium evolutions, you know, the, the price point and kind of the hype around these things a little bit, uh, maybe supersedes its actual applications in real life. One more thing we got to talk about is the weight. The sucker's heavy. The thing is 5.7 ounces. Now, just for reference, my Shimano X Pride 7.2 medium heavy is 4.6 ounces. So full ounce lighter than this thing. So when people say, oh, the Mega Bass Evolutions, they're so light, they're just, you know, they weigh nothing. Not true. Very heavy rod. It's got metal in it. I can't see why having metal in the rod would make it like lighter because um, metal is heavy. Even titanium is going to weigh something. So even though you have Torzite guides, um, I've noticed that the diameter on this rod is a little thicker than some of the other rods. Um, I don't know if that's maybe to make I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to pretend I know a lot about the construction of this rod because it is very complicated. Um, you should listen to Yuki, Yuki Ito's video where he explains this thing. One more thing I want to talk about in this rod is the lock nut. So this lock nut is super freaking cool, but it's just cosmetic. Um, this whole lock nut is not metal. Uh, it's a plastic piece over a cap, and this is actually popped off. Um, I had to re-glue this. So even though this um, okay, so here's the thing. In Mega Bass's marketing material on this, they say that the lock nut is metal and the claws on this thing were actually engineered to give you more um, feeling in the rods because it's metal, touching metal. Two problems with that. Number one, the claws on this lock nut don't actually make contact. Like you can put a piece of paper in between the little claws uh, and the metal piece. So they're not actually making contact. And underneath this is just a cheap plastic cap that screws up and down. So um, I, I, you know, that's marketing bullshit 101 that, you know, we designed the lock nut to make contact with the metal. So when you're touching it, it's gonna have so much more uh, feeling and vibration. Yeah, I don't believe that. Uh, it sounds cool on paper and this lock nut is beautiful and it looks amazing. The way they machined it, it is gorgeous. But for actual functional application, I question uh, the the vidil, or I question the the theory that 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 making contact with the metal gives you more sensitivity when it's not actually making contact. So anyway, small nitpick, <laughs> but that's what we do here on this channel. So overall, I don't get this rod. I'm sure people out there do get it. I don't. I don't like this rod. I'm gonna be selling it. I'm probably gonna pay for, I'm probably gonna sell for pretty much what I got it for used two years ago because the prices on these things seem to be holding. So um, if you're interested in this rod or whatever, hit me up on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting it for sale pretty soon. But uh, anyway, I wish I had a better, more concise review of this rod, but I find this rod to be confusing. I will, I've had it for two years. You'd think I'd be able to figure this thing out by now, but I, I haven't. So I'm just gonna wave the white flag and say, the Mega Bass Evolution rods make no damn sense to me. <laughs> I'm sure there's other rods in the lineup that are much better than this, um, but the Super Diablo Type L, in my opinion, is kind of a dud. So anyway, that's my opinion. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far in the video, please give me a like. Please give me a subscribe. That'd be great. And uh, we'll see you on the next rod review. Peace out.